This video is how to set up equipment integration with Octopus 600 or 900 Visual Field running iSuite. The first thing you need to do is on your Windows 10 computer is set up a few things so um, your Octopus machine, which is running Linux as its operating system, can see and talk to your Windows 10 computers. So the first thing we're going to do is set a static IP. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the control panel. You can search for that quick. And under network and internet, go to network and sharing. And we're going to go over to change adapter settings. This is your Ethernet port that's being used right now to connect to your network, internet, etc., um, in your computer. So we're going to right click this and click properties. And under Internet Protocol version 4, we're going to select that. We're going to hit Properties. And right now, you can see it's getting its IP address automatically. Every time the computer restarts, it's getting it from the router automatically. But we want to assign a static IP. So every time your computer restarts, it's always going to have this IP address. So um, I'm going to put in the static IP address that I want. If you're running a Windows computer, it's almost always going to be these first three sets of numbers, 192, 168, 1. And then this last set of numbers um, can be anywhere from 1 through 250. But I want to assign this computer um, an IP address of uh, 107. And after you hit that, you can hit the tab button, and this is automatically going to populate here. And go down to the default gateway. It's going to be these same numbers up top, except the last number. Um, this is going to be one. And under the preferred DNS server, you can put this same thing we just put in above here. One. And each computer that you're going to assign a static IP address, the IP address for that computer must be different from any other computers on your network. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK close and this will take a um, about a half a minute to a minute to set up just need that assign your static IP I am remotely logged into two different computers at the same time here so um, now that it has a new IP address I'm just logging back in <clears throat> so we're back in here. And the second thing that you need to um, do in the Windows 10 computer, I'm going to go back to the control panel, home, is your computer, your Windows 10 computer, user account needs to have a password. So we're going to go to user accounts here, and you can see there's a Topcon um, is the username for this computer. And we're going to, it has no password right now, but we're going to add a password. So we're going to go over here and make changes to my account, PC settings. Sign in options, <clears throat> and then your password, and we're going to add a password, so you can put in whatever you want, confirm it, and you can put a hint in if you want, it's not required, go to next, finish, and then you already have a password on your account here, in your, so this is my Topcom computer with an IP address of 107 at the end. And the next step is I'm going to make um, some folders that I want to share with my Octopus machine. So here on the desktop, I can make one, or you can do it on your C drive. I'm going to right click, new folder. And I'm going to just name this first folder Octopus. And I'm going to create one more folder called Octopus Report. So this folder is um, where the interface is going to send some demographic information from the EHR so the Octopus machine can read that demographic information and pull it in. And this folder is for if you want to export a report from your Octopus machine to PDF. Um, I just have a folder here that if you want to export reports to. The next thing we need to do is we need to share each one of these uh, folders. We're going to go to Properties, Sharing, and click on share 
and we need to add a permission for everyone. Add and make sure everyone is changed to read and write so your Octopus machine can read and write to that folder. And we also need to click the advanced sharing, share this folder, and under permissions for everyone, we want to allow everyone full control and apply. Okay. And so we need to also share this folder too. So the other computers on your network and the Octopus can share and work on the folder. I'm going to add everyone. We need to give everyone read and write permission. Share. And we need to go to advanced sharing. Share the folder. Permission. Make sure everyone is allowed full control. And so those folders are now shared and you'll be able to see these on the Octopus machine later in the video as we set up window shares. So we have our folder set up and uh, so now we want to go to set up the equipment interface with iFinity. So on your desktop, you should have this already installed in your system. I'm going to double click this and I want to go to add. So I'm going to add my Hogstrike Octopus 600. Double click that. So the EMR source folder, we want to browse for that, which is this here, which we already set up. That's where this interface is going to take your demographics and send a text file into that folder. And your Octopus 600 is going to watch that folder. And when that text file shows up, it's going to pull it into your Octopus 600 and import the demographics. So we're going to select this. And on your desktop, it's already right there. And OK. And the printouts folder, if you're going to export some PDFs to a folder, which I have the Octopus report folder. We're going to browse and select that. And this is on your top, the TopCon computer here. And I'm going to hit save. So that's it for setting that up on this machine. So I'm on a TopCon computer now, and I'm logged into two different computers. You can set this equipment interface up on any computer in your network. But just remember, we're pointing to this TopCon computer, the Octopus um, folder here where we're sending the EMR data. So I'm going to jump over to another computer. This is my pretest computer. And I'm going to set up um, the equipment interface on this computer. And just remember, we're on a separate computer on the network. I'm going to add the Hogstrike. Double click, Octopus 600. You can put in a nickname if you want. I'm going to Let's call it the Octopus 600. The EMR source, remember that's on our network. So we're going to click in front of the network. It's going to take a little bit to search all your computers in the network. <clears throat> and this folder we're sending our EMR data, that text file to, remember it's on the TopCon computer. So it's going to search your network for that. So I see my TopCon computer on the network. Can open up and there's the Octopus folder that we're sending the EMR data over to. And click that. So that's on the network top of the computer. If you were using that um, folder on the top computer for the reports printing out to you, you would just select that Octopus report folder and then you would hit save. So now you have the interface set up on this computer. So what will happen is when you run an, a visual field in an Octopus machine, I have um, an Octopus report set up on this machine just for demonstration purposes. When you click this, um, you're going to see there's PDFs um, that, that was put out for our test test patient here. And you can see the PDF of the visual field printout um, that goes to that folder. But I have a folder on this particular computer for a particular reason. Um, if you're using image management, which I have image management set up on this computer specifically for my PDFs from my Octopus machine. Your image man management um, in EHR will can upload all your images, your visual field, any printouts from your um, image um, machines, and automatically upload and attach them to your EHR. So you can see this. Test test patient has some Opto's 
um, images and some old um, visual fields already attached to their chart from earlier, from back in 2019. So if you have image management, um, what happens is behind the scenes, when your octopus visual field or any other machine exports the data, a report, <coughs> it goes to your folder and that particular folder, um, you can have the, uh, the image management software look at that folder and it automatically ups load. So I have my image management actually stop right now. Um, so I'm going to restart my image management. So it's looking at this folder. So anytime a PDF comes in, what will happen is watch what happens to your PDFs here. These PDFs are automatically uploaded to the cloud, removed from your computer, and attached automatically to the patient's record in image management. So we're gonna go back to this patient, test, test. Now click image management, and we're gonna see that those visual fields are automatically uploaded and attached to the image management. Um, and it only takes about a second um, for all that to happen behind the scenes. It is all automatic. You see those visual fields are automatically attached. And this is a, available and visible on the web version and the iPad version too. So it's pretty slick how that works. This video is how to set up window shares on your Octopus 600 or 900 visual field using iSuite. So on your visual field itself, on the home page with iSuite, we're gonna go up to Tools, Preferences, down to Operating System, and up to Window Shares. And you can see this is um, locked if you're using iSuite 9 or later. If you're using earlier than 9, this will be unlocked already. So uh, we have to put in our login password to unlock that. So just give me a second to put this in. And then we're going to log in. And you can see how that opened up. And we can now read that, it's not grayed out. I'm gonna move these over a little bit so we can see. I already have some added in here ready. Um, but in our other demo video that you should have already watched about how to set up a static IP on your Windows 10 computers, we're gonna add those computers in that we did on those other videos. So I'm gonna click this plus sign. And those static, that static IP was 107. And I'm gonna add the folder that I wanna access. So I'm gonna be an octopus folder. And the protocol, just you can select SMB2. The user is the username on your Windows 10 computer. So that um, was the TopCon computer. I'm gonna add in, and we're gonna go over to the password on your TopCon computer. Yeah, add that in. And I'm gonna add the other folder that we made that we wanted to share with this um, on the top computer, same IP, 107, and share the other folder where it's Octopus Report. Number two, again, it's top con was the computer, Windows 10 computer, our Windows 10 password. And you can see where it says error, that's okay. We're gonna hit apply. And if everything's set up correctly, the errors should turn in okay. As long as they say okay, your, Win your Octopus 600 or 900 can access these folders on your Windows computers. If you are running a version of iSuite prior to iSuite 9, um, such as iSuite 8, 7, or earlier, um, when setting up your window shares, you may need to do one extra step. Um, in the older system, you put the SMB protocol here, it only has SMB 1. So when you're setting up your folders, say we're like we're doing for the TopCon, the 107, the Octopus folder, you have all that information in there, you still might get an error when you click apply. You have to add for each folder you have to add one more line so we're going to put in the same ip address 
the same folder name and you won't have this option SMB 2 or 3 it'll just be SMB 1 and you would just click 1 and for the user you have to add administrator for another you as an extra user and then your password that we set up on the top on computer. So you're gonna see it's the same computer, the top on computer. It's the same folder we're trying to access, Octopus, Octopus. And the only thing, we're, we have the top kind as a user and we need administrator as, another line, as a user. And then when you click apply, um, you'll get okay. And when you add the Octopus report for the 107 computer, um, you'll add the user's top con, and then you'll add another line for Octopus report uh, administrator as a user. Then when you click apply, it'll have okay. And once it says okay, you will be able to access those folders on your Windows computer from your Octopus 600 machine. So for the EMR work list um, that we're going to use for the equipment integration for the Octopus 600, we're gonna go to EMR work list. We're gonna to go to source, text, and in this folder, um, yours should probably be blank, but I'm gonna click this, and I'm going to, um, you would click on the window shares, and then this is the folder that we're, we used in our other video setup, where to send the data demographics from our equipment integration, and, which is this folder here. Then I would hit open, and okay, and that's all set up. And now the Octopus 600 can get your demographics automatically. With the Octopus 600 or 900 using iSuite, this is how you can see in real time how the equipment integration with iFinity EHR or ExamWriter will work. So this is our Octopus 600 machine. And you can see here in our work list, there's a patient list here. Um, but if you click on the work list, these are the patients that are waiting um, to get a visual field. So in iFinity EHR, I already have our test patient up here and pay, the new exam is already open. And we're gonna go to the equipment integration and click on today's date for this exam. Click on integration, equipment interface, and these are the equipment interface integrations I have set up on this machine. So I'm going to click the Octopus 600. So it's going to send the data over to the Octopus 600 that we were just looking at. And you can see it automatically is showing up ready for um, the patient here um, to have an exam done. And that is for our test test patient. So you put in your, um, if you want to put in any parameters, the trial lens, etc. cetera. And um, you can just, we're going to do the right eye first. And go to next and see there's no demographics that you had to put in. Everything's already in here and just choose an exam to do. And it's really that simple. And then we're ready to do the exam. And if you would happen to um, accidentally send over a patient and you're not going to do the exam, uh, once you're finished the exam, right eye, left eye, your work list will be empty. It won't be anybody in here. But if you have somebody in there that you're not going to do a visual field, you can select that and go up to file, excuse me, edit and delete. And that just removes the patient from out of there and your work list is empty. And it's just that simple, sending demographics from EHR over to the Octopus 600.